It only takes a few seconds. One exposed port, one vulnerable system, one threat actor scanning at the right time for an incident to occur. Tom here from Learn Systems, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through a real-world incident that hit shortly after we onboarded a new client. The attack vector was the foundation accounting software, which is widely used in the construction industry and vulnerable to attack in certain scenarios. So let's get started. Before we go any further, I want to disclose my biases. We all have biases. I prefer to be open and honest about mine. Therefore, you can make decisions of going further in this video. Yes, I've been using Hunter since about 2017. I continue to use a product here in June of 2025. I bring it up because they're a big piece of the puzzle in terms of what happened, and they are the tool that caught this incident. Uh, they have also sponsored Lawrence Systems YouTube channel in the past, and I'm hoping they will continue to sponsor it in the future. But this particular video is not sponsored by Hunter's, but of course, I have a bias. Yes, I like them. And why I like them isn't just this great play on words, cracks in the foundation for the foundation accounting software, but because they have a really good threat research team. Threat research is at the core of any good endpoint detection response. You want those people to be very familiar with the modern attack vectors in a way things are being compromised. And that's what they do over at Huntress. They have the threat research team. They don't have some BS about magical AI things. This is something I've always appreciated. They're very people driven. Now, these people use all kinds of great fancy tools to make their job easier. So I'm not saying they're not using some machine learning or really good filtering to get the signal to noise ratio down as low as possible, but they understand modern attacks and are very on top of them. The foundation accounting software has, well, a really poor design. What they're doing instead of normal like modern software architecture where we open up a limited access API so you can open up a port and remotely talk to something. They're instead just opening port 4243 and exposing SQL. This becomes worse because first SA or SQL admin may have a default cred or their DBA account they create, which is not a built-in user, but Huntress observed multiple instances where a high privilege account are left unchanged with default credentials. So weak password, password reuse. And once these threat actors figure out that, hey, this talks standard SQL, and instead of logging in as a non-privileged user, we can just use a default password or a set of maybe common passwords that are used. And from there, we can run a shell. And when threat actors run shells, they get further access because this runs at high system privilege. They use this scanner going around looking for this port because it's, well, the port you set by default per the instructions from foundation. And then they use these default passwords, get a shell. What happens next? Let's go and look through some of the Huntress logs. And what they're showing is, I'll get right to the shady part here, is with that shell access, they're figuring out what privileges they have, what details they can find out about the network. And they're doing all of this without loading any special utilities. Microsoft includes quite a bit of tooling that allows you to pivot around and do access. This is often referred to as living off the land. They may even use some of the tools in here to have connections that go out so they gain more access to the system. Now let's move from the Huntress blog post to the Huntress dashboard so we can look at the actual client incident. This happens and starts at 151157. I've redacted the commands because it has some client data in there, but it's the same commands that are in our blog post. So 15, 11, 57, 58, 59, 2, 3, and 4. So seven seconds later, host isolation is kicked in. Host isolation means this is off the network, breaking all connections, good and bad. They don't just break the perceived bad connections. All connections are locked down. Only one connection remains that allows Huntress to talk to this particular host. So they have log information or in case of a false positive, the ability to reverse this and unisolate the host. This gives you time to work on and remediate the incident and get things back to normal. Now, if this was not isolated, I'm pretty sure it would have turned into a ransomware event. We didn't let them get to the full payload because, well, it's better to stop it before you find out exactly what they want because it's certainly nothing good. But let's dive into some lessons learned here. Prior to doing any managed client, we do paid assessments. The reason for this is you can't protect what you don't know about. So we take the time to evaluate all their systems. We understand what their network is. We understand what their servers are. We understand what software they're running and what ports are open. And from that, that turns into projects like, yes, we're going to onboard you, but this is a project needs to be fixed. I know in an ideal world, you should just cut off all access and anything that looks shady or insecure, like some port open by some accounting software, 
you know, we should get that turned off right away, but that would disrupt their business. So you set it as a project and you work hand in hand with the client to mitigate things. That's what happens in the real world. I know a lot of security researchers who just will point and say that should be fixed immediately. You should have just turned it off and mitigated the risk from day one, but that would have also greatly disrupted their business. Not to say that this didn't, but it certainly made the project quite the priority. Next, big name software, such as the according to their site, the most popular construction accounting software doesn't mean it's well-written and secure. So it still should be behind a VPN. Now, the last part I want to talk about is very controversial and that's choosing security tools. As I disclosed in the beginning, I'm biased towards Huntress. Their engagement with the community, their engagement in the security world where they're publishing things that are completely transparent so anyone else can pick these up and understand these threats. And as I mentioned, that write-up is in the link below. It's part of the Huntress blog. I think that's great. And it's one of the reasons I really have a lot of faith in them. Now, would another tool have caught this and stopped it? I don't know. There's not an easy way to assess this. Maybe if someone can give me a giant pile of money, we can go through and set up security tools and rerun attack scenarios and see if each one can find this. That's a heavy lift. It's not an easy thing to set up. And it's even harder when you tell the company you want to evaluate it because maybe they're putting extra monitoring on. I don't know. This is not something that is really easy. And if one attack vector gets through one, will it get through the others? And does each one keep up as much? This is why people ask me all the time, what's the best security tool? And I was like, well, these are the ones I use. I think they're the best, but I don't know. I can't say that the other company wouldn't have caught this as well. They may work perfectly fine and do that. I do have one video I'll leave linked down below because I have covered this topic before where we were using two security vendors at the same time and Huntress found it and well, Sentinel-1 at the time decided to argue with me and tell me it wasn't a real threat. Now, Sentinel-1 has since fixed the problem they had. That video is a few years old, but yes, I did cover that topic before. But I wanna hear from you. Leave those thoughts and comments down below. Loved hearing your opinions on this. If you want to have a more in-depth discussion or ask questions about this, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com. Like and subscribe to see more content. And of course, connect with me on the socials at lawrencesystems.com. All right, thanks.